This video demonstrates the management of a really difficult diabetic case. This male patient is 42 years old, has a badly controlled type 2 diabetes since 15 years and a poor compliance. His eyes were never laser treated. I perform a FECO because of the severe work which has to be done in the posterior segment. You see here a extensive retrohyaloidal bleeding, nasally a beginning tractive detachment. I start with a central core vitrectomy and which is important now I try now to open the posterior hyoid which succeeds just now. This is very important in diabetic cases to start in the periphery and continue to the center. Don't start with a central PVD. Perform a peripheral PVD. One sees better here the opening of the posterior hyoid in contrast to the epiretinal blood. Again here you see the opening of the posterior hyoid and the blood lies between the posterior hyoid and the retinal surface. Retina is attached. Again you see here nicely the opening of the posterior hyoid. This is a very important part of the management of a PDVR. Open the posterior hyoid in the periphery and then work your, your way from the periphery to the center. I remove now the blood clot between the posterior hyaloid and the retina. You see that the retina is attached in this region. In the left hand I hold a flute needle which is a quite nice grasping instrument. In the right hand I work with the knob spatula, the vitrector or with the straight vitreous scissors. Again further opening of the posterior hyaloid and now I can start the work to peel the central membranes. I lift here the posterior hyaloid cautiously in order to avoid a rupture due to very adherent parts of the retina and the posterior hyaloid. Now I cut the posterior hyaloid in order to remove this part. Here a big blood clot which I, cry, which I try to delaminate with the knob spatula. Now with the straight vitreous scissors. It can be removed at the end with the vitreous cutter. You need a low cut rate of approximately 500 cuts per minute. I performed a FECO in this case because the patient needs an extensive posterior segment surgery and a 
silicon oil injection so a opacification of the lens could not be prevented. Now I remove the epimacular blood clot by cautiously lifting the blood clot with the flute needle in the left hand. The next step is the excision of adherences between the posterior hyaloid, the blood clot and the retina. I'm using the straight vitreous scissors and now the vitrector. Especially the new vitreous cutters allow the trimming of these membranes. The technique, I, the technique I use here is a en bloc excision of these membranes which has the big advantage that these membranes are completely removed. The trimming technique will leave, would leave these membranes and possibly cause a tractive detachment of the retina in a later phase of the disease. We work now nasally and you can see the very strong adherence of the posterior hyaloid to the retina. I try again to open the posterior hyaloid with the retractor and now try to delaminate the posterior hyaloid with the knob spatula and here now to cut the adherences with the straight vitreous scissors which, are, which is a quite tedious procedure um, especially because the inside is quite reduced as we can as we realize just now nonetheless one should definitely try to avoid to induce retinal ruptures so these membranes can be slowly and with a lot of patience be removed with the knob spatula, vitreous scissors and vitrector I work in the right hand with a Eckert forceps and the left hand with the straight bridges scissors and remove the last fibrovascular membrane you can see nicely how broadly it is attached to the retina it is important to find the correct level in order not to set a rupture into the retina. Again, you see how important the bimanual technique is especially, is especially for these very, very difficult diabetic cases. Now the last fibrovascular membrane is removed with final cuts of the straight vitreous scissors and now removal of the membrane with the vitreous cutter. With this on block technique we could remove all the membranes so that a later detachment of the retina is quite unlikely and finally we can remove the final blood clot and membrane with the vitreous cutter
you can see that there is a rupture below the optic disc at 6 o'clock right here and I think also at 5.30 first we have to trim the vitreous base by indenting the sclera with the sclera depressor and cutting the vitreous base with the cutter you can see the fibrotic ring now nasally of the optic disc stretching to the temporal arcades now following is the removal of epiretinal blood and diathermy the next step is the injection of PFCL because we have a detached retina nasally and because we want to perform a laser coagulation also in the detached part of the retina which we perform just now I performed 3500 laser burns and implant now the IOL the, uh, the IOL can of course also be implanted in the beginning we used to implant it later because the edges of the IOL can be disturbing if you work in the periphery which follows now is a PFCL against air exchange I now introduce the infusion line of the silicon oil infusion and perform a air against silicon oil exchange this is the eye under silicon oil now I remove some residual silicon oil in order to have a normal tonus of the globe and of course the sclerotomy has to be sutured thank you very much